Let's talk CDU. In particular, let's talk CDU XP. Now, the CDU XP was an iconic jet ski in its era, spanning four generations from 1991 to 2004. First introduced in 91, the CDU XP was the flagship and saw upgrades for the next 13 years until 2004 when the RXP took over. The CDU XP splits opinion none more than the XPDI, even until this day. Hi, I'm Joe, and I'm on a mission to live out a childhood dream of owning a Sea-Doo XP. I grew up watching these iconic skis. The golden era of Sea-Doo when two strokes were king. One of my fondest memories was the distinctive smell of a two-stroke engine bay, and of course, the iconic start-up sound. However, see the thing is, I was born in 1993. That's me there. And this is pretty much the time when these skis were at their pinnacle and being sold. They're evolutionary. So fast forward 26 years and well, honestly, a lot has changed. With seemingly everyone turning their back on these two-stroke engines. Which if you're me, basically sucks. Why? Because I knew that I wanted to get my hands on one of these classic skis from this era, with the XP being the one that fascinated me the most. However, this now fading technology with the XP essentially being blacklisted by all of the dealers is now being replaced with the Sea-Doo Spark. It's not an XP. I think it's the distinctive product styling of the XP. The neon bold graffiti style graphics. It's just got that unique appeal to it. The HX spring seat, the motocross style stance on the water. Something that even you newer guys won't admit it. But the Spark tries to emulate, right? It is the classic story of old versus new. So, it took three years and a lot of looking, but I finally bit the bullet and found this beauty. This is the 2003 Sea-Doo XPDI Direct Injection 951cc Rotax engine. Now before you all go, a DI, are you mad? Don't you have to be mad to buy a 16 year old jet ski? Now before you guys go crazy in the comments pointing out all of the issues that the DI had with the fuel injectors and the electrical systems and all of those things and that I'm doomed and life is going to be over, please remember these skis once upon a time were cutting edge for their time and in 2003 direct injection was relatively new in its, in its infancy. Now these get a lot of hate with people saying well 2003 this was the guinea pig engine which probably is true but the point is this is the first ski of the direct injection innovation if you like on the XPs. Everything in retrospect is easy, right? To say, oh, that technology is not that great. It has these issues. But the thing is, if you compare this to say a Spark, for example, a Spark has had 14 years more innovation and trial and error for all the other skis. Now, before I even considered purchasing an XP, I did extensive research trying to be informed on all of the good and the bad about these skis. I spoke to as many dealers as I could, mechanics that had worked on these skis firsthand. What I found, in all honesty, was so much hate towards these Sea-Doo DIs from all of the dealers. They have basically turned their back on them. I tried my best to understand, and from what I could find, for all the petrol heads out there, they love the carburetor versions of this 951cc engine. The reason being, they could tinker with the engine more. It was less complex, it didn't have as many electrical systems, and when things went wrong, they didn't need electrical diagnostic kits to put them right. Additionally, a common theme that I came across is that the DI is wonderful when it's running okay, but as soon as something goes wrong, the common theme on all the forums and the dealers is that you're doomed. You're never going to fix the problems, they have issues with the fuel pump, they have issues with the rectifier, they have issues with the battery. The list was so long. Blah, blah, blah. The thing is, however, I wanted a red one. I want one! I want to see you XPDI! 
As a kid, as every kid does, I had a favourite colour and it was red. Pretty much everything I had was red. Now, other than getting a car version, which were typically yellow and spraying it all red, I was going to be going for the 03, 04 DI model. So in all honesty, I think I was looking for like three years on eBay, Gumtree, boats and outboards, basically anywhere online that sold these jet skis, I was looking pretty much daily to the point where I basically thought I wasn't going to find one. My criteria was basically this big list saved on an iPhone note and I just looked through it and if it didn't hit the criteria, I basically discounted it. I hate to admit it now, but at points I actually was going to give up the search because I thought it was just so unlikely that I would find one. So I actually got quite close with a number of XPs. Now they weren't DIs, they were carb versions. There was one ski in particular, it was a 2001 yellow carb XP, went all the way down to pool to see it got really, really excited about it. And then we got there and the steering cable was tight. The rear pump was corroded. So again, super deflating and the trail went cold. Finally, one Saturday evening when I was browsing through eBay, as I did quite a lot at that time, I came across a Sea-Doo XP DI. It was like ding, ding, ding. Immediately, I loved the ad. I went into it, saw all the photos and I was like, wow, this is perfect. It'd only been on for an hour. So I knew I needed to be quick. The trouble was, it was Saturday evening, so I couldn't ring the dealer till the following morning. One owner, 35 hours use from new, full service history, good compression on the cylinders, no marks, and get this bit, two original keys. So one full speed and one learner key. Now with these old skis, that's normally, you never get that. It's always an aftermarket programmed key. And the next bit for anyone who's into these old retro skis, if this doesn't blow your mind, then I don't know what will. So this ski, was part exchanged back into the dealer. Now the dealer who was selling this ski on eBay was the same dealer and the same salesman that sold this ski back in 2003 to the original owner. So at first I kept refreshing the ad thinking, this is a bogus ad, but it was real. Sunday morning came, I rang Tom Hope, who was the owner of Jetworks in Kent. He confirmed all the questions. I basically grilled him on as much as I could. Every question I could think of, the list was all answered and I arranged to go see it on Monday. I so vividly remember pulling up at the Jetworks and seeing all of the new skis lined up. And then at the end, there was this DI I'd waited to see one for so long and it was there glistening in the sun. It was honestly amazing. So as I walked up to the ski, it was literally like, you know when you have a childhood dream and you see something for the first time and just seeing the handlebars, I mean, no one will really understand it, but just like seeing the old Sea-Doo, um, it was just amazing. There was a relentless inspection that took place. I looked over everything, literally with a fine tooth comb. And unfortunately, the only like negative if you like is the steering cable was quite tight but because of the relentless you know research that i've done previously i knew the rough cost of what a steering cable would be about 120 pounds i believe it was so i wasn't overly phased it was disheartening because i wanted this ski to be perfect but how perfect is a 16 year old ski going to be really there was a few little chips in certain places but it was only ever going to end one way me and tom did a deal i was super super happy it was on a brand new trailer a brand new extreme trailer so it was just basically tick 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 with all of the things that i could have ever hoped for in a ski and then we arranged to come pick it up i didn't pick it up there and then which was really hard leaving it coming away and then having to come back but we went back i think the following week collected it and brought it home and as you can see it's now on the driveway megan's filming it Okay guys, so I know you're not supposed to run a jet ski on the flush for this long, but it was the first time and a super proud moment for me to show my dad. You can probably see it in my facial expressions. Anyone's dream as a kid is to one day do something your parents look at and go, wow. And for me, this was a pretty special moment.
Okay, so that's the story so far, guys. I'm hoping to get on the ski super soon. In all honesty, I haven't ever rode one of these XPs, so all of this, I hope it lives up to expectation. I actually rode an RX Di back when I was like 14, 15, and that at the time felt incredibly fast, incredibly nimble. So hopefully it still feels fast, feels nimble. In addition, unfortunately, I wasn't able to test ride the ski in Kent, but because there was so much extensive paperwork, so much detail of the history of the ski, and the fact that it's only got 35 hours use, I'm pretty confident it'll be okay but hopefully fingers crossed when we get this out on the water it doesn't sink or take on water we don't have a horror story and it runs as perfectly as a jet ski can do that's 16 years old okay guys so that's it for this episode hit the subscribe button come along for the ride i've made this channel as a passion project for all these classic jet skis so of course this series is gonna be focused on this di but i have a bucket list of these classic jet skis working all the way from the sp up to like the gsx all different skis so if you're interested make sure you come along for the ride thanks for watching guys <laughs>